Did you meet Walt Disney while you were in England? Yeah. He would come to this. He, he, Walt had a way of being able to talk to a, almost anybody at a level, and it was wonderful because he'd come to my studio and, and sit and talk with me about work in America, and I hoped that one day I'd be able to get there, which I did, of course, on my own, but... No, he was the greatest man I ever worked for. He would come to our house and have dinner with us, uh, which was an exciting thing because he found that my wife was not one who dragged and, and oh, Mr. Disney. She let him relax when he came to see us. So he'd come to our house and relax and bring his wife and they'd have dinner with us. What was he like on that personal level? A very relaxed. Very wonderful to know. Very great privilege to know him. Turn my life around. Did he treat you differently in the work environment or was he always? No, the same. Disney style was something unique and put together by people like the rest of us, like John Hench and the rest of us, were put our little bits in, but the war was the governing factor. He was a man who knew what he wanted and pointed the way that the way he wanted it to be. He may express things better if you listen to John Hench or, or to Ellen Shaw or to somebody else. But the first thing, Bill Walsh, in fact, I remember Bill Walsh was a producer for Disney. And uh, Bill Walsh was told to get on and do something or other that uh, he said, but I've never done this before, Walt. He said, well, now's the time to find out, isn't it? <laughs> and it was. If you didn't find out, you found out that you didn't have a job. So you'd better find out. Was Walt very involved in the day-to-day -day operations? Did yes. He down to, to, did he choose colors yeah. or give you suggestions on... Oh, no. He'd leave you to do the main work on the thing, but he would be in there to see... I'd hear him coming down the hall, and he had this cough that finally got him. But I hear him coming and think, God, great, he's coming to see me. Each day he'd come to see me. It, it came to see everybody else who he felt needed or wanted or he wanted to see what they were doing because he was interested in what I was doing because I had a certain talent that he enjoyed. So I was very fortunate to have him come by and see me. But I was excited, too, that uh, this great man would come in and just sit down and say, well, what are you doing here? Do you have a favorite memory of Walt Disney? Favorite memory of Walt? Of those, uh, favorite memory of that Walt is the, of his coming in to see me in my office and discussing other things other than what he was doing, but his life as well. He would tell me, tell me about his early days and to be part and parcel of Walt Disney's confidant was something very exciting. The important thing in my whole life at Disney was to be on that top floor where the people were. And I think I've already told you how one day they brought in the box, the thing on wheels to take all my stuff out and said I had to go down below on the second floor and uh, so I was protesting, in comes Walt and says, what are you doing that? Why are you sending him downstairs? And they had no reason for that. And they, they never tried it again because he said, no, I want him up here. He would come each by each day to see what I was doing. It was wonderful to have such a man running a studio, running all the things that he did, and yet he'd find time come and see what I was doing, because I was involved with the things he was involved in, of course. I wasn't involved in something else. I was involved with something he specifically wanted me to do, and therefore I was part and parcel of his whole business of being. How did he communicate what he wanted? Was he a very visual person? Yeah, because he he didn't draw or anything. He wasn't he wasn't an artist, but he could he could tell you what he wanted and visualize it. If he told you what he wanted, he could specifically express himself so well that you could see it before your eyes practically. 
And I'd do a sketch and he'd say, no, no, that's, that's not it. Or yes, okay. So it was a sketching that we could work together on. Were there things that he didn't like that you just knew that he didn't like? He stayed away from those things. He didn't like, um, he didn't like it if you didn't have something to add to the picture. If you just copied something else, there was no point in it. He wanted to see you move forward with, if he had an idea and then he, you develop the idea. You don't just, oh, that's what Walt wants. You listen and then you develop from what he's saying. So he was the ideas man. He was the vision behind everything. He was the man that turned me around in my life. What about the fantasy aspects of Disney? He had great feeling for fantasy. And of course, as we know, because everything that we did in then Disneyland was fantasy. Now, how did you incorporate that into your work? By being involved with Disney. Did he let you experiment a lot? Hmm? Oh, yeah. If you didn't come up with something of your own, you were just being a copyist, that would be no good either. You had to have your own ideas and you develop, develop his idea into something a little better.